Hello everyone. In this video, we'll see how smart identification works in the QTP. So quickly revise few things that we have learned in the earlier videos. What we have learned? We have learned that, that QTP identifies the objects on the basis of the mandatory and the assistive properties and whose which can be configured from tools, object identification and by selecting the corresponding environment and select the any object you can see the mandatory and assistive properties from here. So sometimes it happens that the normal identification doesn't work. So in that case, when the normal identification fails due to the dynamic changes in the properties of the objects, the smart identification works. Smart identification is nothing but an algorithm used by QTP when it is not able to recognize an object by the default mechanism. So here is an option to enable the smart identification or disable it on the basis of the object. So for each and every object, there is an option to select the smart identification. So if this option is checked, then only the smart identification works for that object. So again, smart identification works on the basis of two properties. The first one is the base filter properties and the second one is optional filter properties. In the base filter properties, the most fundamental properties of a particular object comes whose values cannot be changed without changing the essence of the object. So this is the fundamental properties whose value can never be changed. Okay, And all the other properties that are required to identify if, the object comes under the optional filter properties. So let's understand um, how smart identification works. So I have created one web environment or uh, it's a simple HTML page. This is the HTML page that consists of one table and within that table we have an edit box demo. Let's say put anything, uh, let's put any password and press enter. On pressing enter you would be taken to the next page. So this is the simple HTML page. So let's do the recording on this page. Record by selecting the default option. Okay, the page gets launched. Okay, so let's put any login here, any password here and press enter. Go to the script and just stop it. Now let's do something in this application that is very common in the practical world. Say uh, the developer or the management finds that this enter name is not good enough. So they decided to change the name. So let's change this name. So I have this HTML code and I have opened that in the simple notepad plus plus. So to change this is the property for that value enter button. So I am just changing the name of that button from enter to submit. Okay, just change it, save it and go to the page and refresh it. Now see, the sub enter button now gets changed to the submit button. Now let's play our script that we have recorded earlier. Just play it. A script is playing currently and see it stuck on to the third step. So for obvious reason this script should fail because the properties that are recorded at time is different from the runtime because we have changed the properties of this enter button. Now let's see what happens to this script. It is stuck at this position. It clicks that button. Our script gets passed. So see the script is passed. It is not failed but it should fail in that case. Now let's analyze why this happens. Okay. So when we did recording, so the property of our object is like this. The HTML tag is its input, the name is enter and the type is button. Okay, but when the script is executed, the property becomes this. HTML tag is input, name is submit, the type is button because we have changed the properties. Now let's see how smart identification works. So this is the mandatory properties and the assistive properties of that web button. So it looks for the thing HTML tag name and type. This property doesn't match because previously the name was enter but at the runtime it becomes the submit. 
so our normal identification won't work so it will go to the smart identification let's see how smart identification works smart identification when enabled then in that case qtp forgets the learn test object description it means whatever the objects that are stored in our object repository qtp forgets of all those objects it creates a new object list that containing the objects that matches the properties defined in the base filter so what it did it will go to the parent object of that object so in our case the qtp is looking for this enter object so it will go to the its parent object so its parent object is page so let's go to this case so this is our new application after change so in this case the parent object of that button is the page okay the page is this parent object so it will list all its child objects so in our case the page has this child object the first thing is login the second thing is password then it has a submit button then it has a reset button so these are the four objects and the description of the objects is like this the login button has this description password has this submit has this reset has this now it will create a new candidate list okay so the first list is like this which will match with the base filter properties so let's look over here so actually when the script is running qtp is looking for the object which has these properties okay so it will create a list one first okay that matches the properties of the base filter properties okay so it will check in all the four objects that whose html tag is input so it goes to the login first yes login first so login will become in this list then for password yes it is also input so it this will become in your list then again for the submit and the reset thing okay so in H if the html tag works so the, this list one contains the four objects finally it will look for the single object in the list if only the single object remains in the list then qtp finds that this is the object for which it is looking for now it will go to the optional filter properties uh, one by one so it will check the first property name first and then it will search for all the objects that whose name is enter then it will look for the login no login its name is login its name is password its name is submit and its name is reset so this property will skip so name will get skipped why because it will not return any object so again your list 2 will contain the login then password then submit and then reset now finally it will go for the next property that is type now it will look whose type is button okay so in list 3 it will look for the type button so it will check type button login so login will not come into the password again password will not come now it will check that submit has type button so in this list it will look for the submit okay now he uh, will reset is a no so in the final list 3 only one object remaining so it means it is the object that qtp is looking for so in this way the smart identification work so it will create its own list with the first base filter properties matches and if there is only one object then yes it is that object if not then it will go to the optional filter properties and it will narrow down only one object matching all of the save description property okay so it will go by one by one if name list gets listed only one object then that is the property in our case the type so finally it will work with this object so using this mechanism qtp was able to click our enter button so this is how the smart identification works into the qtp
Okay, so let's do a quick summary by this algorithm or uh, how smart identification works. QTP forgets the learn test object description and creates a new object list that may matches all the properties in the base filter properties. If only one object gets returned uh, from the base filter property matching, so that is an object that is looking for. If the object is greater than one, Okay, the multiple objects find this, then QTP filters out uh, the objects that does not match the optional filter property. So it will go to the optional filter property and check one by one property. So for the first property, if only one object is written, then that is the object. And if the object is greater than one, then it will again go to the second property of the optional filter property and then it will check if it is one then it's yes and if it is not one then it will go to the again and so on it will go to the again and again so finally if only one object comes in the list then that is the object and if uh, all the properties are matched by the optional filter properties and in there are multiple objects then your QTP script will fail it will then QTP script is not able to find that object on the application so this is how the smart identification works into the QTP thank you